Prophecy from 1979 is a movie about a mutant bear. Of all creatures I've seen, mutant bears are first. Interestingly, this is the movie that inspired South Park's Man Bear Pig. This way, please. The movie focuses on husband and wife Rob and Maggie. Rob is a doctor who works for an environmental agency. His main job is to help inner city families who can't afford health care and can't defend themselves in court. One lady's baby is getting bitten by a rat and the landlord won't even do anything about it. Maggie is a musician and she's pregnant. She's afraid to tell Rob as she knows he doesn't want to have kids. Rob is told about a big paper mill in Maine. The paper mill owns the land, but the Native Americans claim it is their land. Tensions are high, and they're hoping Rob can find evidence that the mill is contaminating the land, giving it back to the natives. So Rob and Maggie head off to Maine. This particular forest isn't too safe right now. Why is that? Here we meet Mr. Isley, who works for the lumber mill. He explains that a crew of lumberjacks went missing, so they sent a search and rescue team who also went missing. The native people claim this is the work of Katahdin, a Bigfoot-like creature, but uglier. Yeah, it's sort of a Bigfoot, I guess. Only it's uglier. While driving to their cabin, some locals have blocked the path, led by John Hawks, who refuses to move. A fight breaks out, and it's axe versus chainsaw, and it's not looking good for Hawks. Tensions really are high between these two groups. Hawks gets a chainsaw right up to his neck, and he still refuses to let them pass. It is Ramona who finally gives in and lets them through. At the cabin, Maggie cooks up some fish that Rob caught out on the lake, and everything seems perfectly fine. That is until a crazy raccoon attacks them. Rob ends up smashing it up against the wall and throwing it in the fire. He then confirms that the raccoon didn't have rabies, but something is up. The next day, Rob and Maggie get invited to some sacred land, a lake that the natives claim is the Garden of Eden. Everything grows much larger here, and they find a tadpole as big as a bullfrog. At the paper mill, they get the grand tour. Mr. Isley shows them how clean and environmentally safe the paper mill is. There's no chemicals used other than some chlorine to dye the paper, and it doesn't go in the water. But Rob's not buying it. As they are leaving, Rob finds evidence of mercury in the water. Now it's not really clear in the movie why the paper mill uses mercury. They just say it's cheaper to use. So I looked it up. It turns out, this is based on a real event. In Dryden, Ontario, there was a paper mill that used mercury cells and sodium chloride electrosis to make caustic so- uh, uh, Okay, I'm no chemist here, but basically they were using mercury to bleach the paper. They ended up dumping 10 tons of mercury into the river over the years and yeah, people got sick. 850 First Nations people who needed that river to live were told to stop eating the fish and stop drinking the water. Huh? Now back to prophecy, Rob confirms it is mercury poisoning that is causing all the infant deaths, burns on the natives, and that sick raccoon. Maggie is obviously upset over learning this as she too ate the fish from the river and she's pregnant. What's the only liquid in the world that isn't wet? What was the answer? Mercury. It's been an hour, and we still haven't seen this creature at all. Well, finally, we get our first kill, and it's a good one. A family's out camping in the woods, and Katahdin attacks. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm looking at here. It's definitely a unique looking monster. You've heard of vampires and ghosts, but have you ever heard of Katahdin, the mutilated bear monster? The best death ever happens here too. 
This kid is in his sleeping bag, hopping away, and Man Bear Pig takes one slap at him, and poof! He's a bunch of feathers! Not a drop of blood! Katahdin probably thought this was just a banana hopping away. Down by the river, Maggie finds a deformed creature caught in a net. It's still alive, but barely, so they take it to the closest village to try to save it. Rob calls everyone together so they can see the effects of the mercury poisoning, and Mr. Isley admits that he might have known about it. They don't have much time to fight because Katahdin comes in looking for its baby. They hide in the tunnels under the ground and basically just stare at each other for like 10 minutes. When they think it's safe, the sheriff pops his head up and, oops, big mistake, Katahdin knocks him out. The next day, the group splits up. Mr. Isley goes to the top of the mountain where there is a radio tower and he tries to call for help. Ah, uh, it doesn't go so well for him. The rest of the group finds an old truck and decides to try to take it into town. But it's a long drive and it'll take them well into the night. After about another 10 minutes of them just driving and nothing else is happening, Katahdin finally attacks. It flips the truck over with ease and everyone runs off, leaving the sheriff wide open. Eventually, they get to a lake and swim across. Thinking they're safe and the beast can't swim, they celebrate. It's cut short though when Katahdin bursts up through the water. They all run into the cabin and it attacks, basically destroying it. Rob and John Hawks attack the beast, but it's no use and it kills John Hawks. It's not looking good for Rob either, but he doesn't give up, stabbing it over and over again with an arrow. Blood is pouring out everywhere, and eventually the bear puts him down and falls into the water. But that's not good enough for Rob, and he dives in, hoping to give it some more pain. The next morning, Rob and Maggie are on board a plane. Uh, somehow. Mr. Isley never made it to the radio tower, so he couldn't call for help. I'm guessing they just walked back to town? As the plane flies overhead, another deformed creature pops out of the woods. Well, they did it again. They couldn't just leave well enough alone, huh? Gotta open it up to a sequel. At least in this case, it makes sense for there to be more mutilations. The mercury wouldn't just affect one bear in the woods. Ultimately, prophecy isn't too bad. The acting is good. I especially like Maggie, always fearing for her unborn baby. The fact that it's loosely based on real events happening around that time is kind of cool. As unfortunate as it is, movies like this help spread awareness. Katahdin looks pretty fake. Time Magazine said it looks like Smokey the Bear with an advanced acne condition, and I would have to agree. It's a fun little movie though. I give Prophecy two jumping bananas out of four.